A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they take you before synagogues and before rulers and authorities, do not worry about how or what your defense will be or about what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. The Gospel of the Lord. He put all things beneath his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Brothers and sisters, the recent scandals in the church and also the synod now of bishops in Rome, uh, dealing especially with the young, have brought about many um, sort of commentaries, right? Right? But one of the biggest commentaries I've heard over and over again is that many in the hierarchy, many in the church are quote-unquote tone deaf. I've heard this over and over again, this term, tone deaf. Not listening, or maybe sort of listening, but not coming to the right conclusion about what especially young people are saying and what the people on the ground are saying. And sometimes this accusation happens. Pope Francis himself has has actually used this, especially with regard to clergy uh, who are tone deaf to their congregations, right? Not knowing the smell of their sheep, as he often says. Well, we here at the St. Jude Shrine don't have any option, right? Because everybody comes to the St. Jude Shrine, right? The whole people off the street, people from all over the country, the rich, the poor, the, the, uh, the, the educated, the uneducated, all come here. And so my attempt this week at the Novena is to try to open up something that uh, I've heard over and over again. I've been a priest for 10 years. And what I've heard, especially amongst our dear young friends, but also amongst the elderly and even amongst the middle age, especially in this great city of San Francisco, is the world is suffering from a plague of loneliness. Loneliness. People often feel alone and isolated. They feel alone and isolated, and it really brings them down. And there are lots of reasons for this. And this week, I'm going to address this topic of loneliness and about how, in fact, our Lord gives us several ways to sort of overcome this loneliness. Because we're not created just for ourselves, right? We're not even created just for me and Jesus, but we're created for each other, centered around God. We hear this today in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, where he talks about, he gave him over to all things to the church, which is his body. And the church being absolutely essential to the biblical story, and the church being ab- absolutely essential now, that we have each other to help get us to God. And in having each other, God willing, will also help overcome our loneliness. This week we'll speak about many things. We'll speak about friendship. We'll speak about friendship with each other here. We'll speak about friendship within the church. And we'll speak about friendship with the saints above. And ultimately friendship with God as a way to help overcome that loneliness and draw us into communion with each other and with the Lord. And ultimately as something that will help get us to heaven. But today, as we begin, we begin by invoking our Blessed Mother. She is the icon of the church. She is the one who is the most perfect disciple of the Lord. And I'll come back to this later in the week, but she also knew solitude. She also knew being alone. Our late uh, Holy Father Emeritus, Pope Benedict, in his book, Jesus of Nazareth, pointed out something to me about the Annunciation Gospel I had never thought about. It's at the very end of that gospel. The angel Gabriel comes and gives this beautiful message to Mary, right? To this young girl, to a young person. You will bear the Son of God. 
There's some questions back and forth, and eventually Mary, of course, issues her fiat. Let it be done. Let it be done unto me. And she's told about Elizabeth. She's told about all these other things that are going on. But what's the very last line in that gospel? You all remember? Then the angel departed from her. The angel did not accompany her. The angel did not appear to her several other times. Mary was, as Pope Benedict said, alone. She was alone with this new knowledge. Salvation was coming to the world. She was the only person at that point to know it. She had to go forth with fears and anxieties and all the problems that might accompany this, yet she went forward in faith because of her close friendship Let us then, brothers and sisters, in the midst of our solitariness, in the midst of what can often seem lonely, let us join with St. Jude and our Blessed Mother and all the saints this week as we walk together, walk together closer towards God and walk ultimately towards becoming the saints we are called to be. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. We pray together our prayer. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me, who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need, that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly and that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us. And for all who honor and invoke thine aid, amen. Please be seated.